Hey guys, welcome to the channel. There are many methods to join two metals together. One among these procedures is gas welding. Gas welding is also called oxygen fuel welding. This is because oxygen is a constant component in any kind of gas welding operation. By burning fuel and oxygen, a strong gas flame is used to generate heat and raise the temperature of the metal. Due to the heat generated, the metal melts. This molten metal is localized to the place where the metal is to be welded. When the metal is molten, it starts to flow along the edges where the joint is to be made. Sometimes, a filler metal is added to the flowing molten metal to fill up the cavity at the edges. The joint cavity which is filled with molten metal is allowed to solidify to get a stronger joint. This is because the solidified metal at the joint fuses the two separate metal pieces. This is similar to how a glue gun fuses two pieces of plastic together with molten plastic. Different combinations of gases are used to obtain the flame. The most common fuel used is acetylene. This is because acetylene torches can burn as hot as 3000 degrees. Apart from acetylene, hydrogen and propylene are also used as fuels here. The type of fuel used changes based on the workpiece and the availability. Thinner workpieces use oxygen and natural gas as it generates much lesser heat than acetylene. The main reason why acetylene burns with such high temperature is due to the triple bond between the two carbon atoms. When acetylene is mixed with oxygen and is burnt under a controlled environment, it produces large amounts of heat. This burning also produces carbon dioxide, which helps in preventing oxidation of metals which are being welded. The byproduct water evaporates into the atmosphere as water vapor due to the high temperature. The components that are used in oxygen acetylene welding are similar for all types of gas welding. The first component is the gas cylinder. Five parts of oxygen is required to fully combust two parts of acetylene. Oxygen and acetylene are stored in separate cylinders. The color of the tank which holds acetylene is maroon and the oxygen cylinder is colored in black. This is the color convention followed in India and is not constant in all countries. The flow of the two gases is controlled by regulators. Two separate regulators are connected to both the cylinders. The regulator ensures that the pressure of the gas from the tanks matches the required pressure in the hose. The flow rate is adjusted by the operator using needle valves on the torch. There are two pressure gauges present on each of the cylinders. One gauge is used to show the cylinder pressure and the other gauge is used to indicate the working pressure. As the gas welding occurs, fuel and oxygen are consumed. This causes the pressure of the cylinders to reduce. By keeping track of the pressure, we'll be able to have a rough idea on how much of the fuel or oxygen is left. By altering the amount of gas that is flowing through the torch, we can change the temperature and flame characteristics. This is determined by the working pressure. The gases from the cylinder are transferred to the torch by hoses. The hose color is similar to the color of the cylinder. Oxygen hoses are in light colors like green or blue, and they are also in black. The hose color is similar to the color of the cylinder. The color coding is done to avoid confusion. The hoses are then connected to a torch. The torch has a connection for the fuel and a connection for the oxygen. Two control valves are provided to control the flow of oxygen and fuel. A handle is also provided for the welder to grasp the torch. A mixing chamber is provided to allow the oxygen and fuel. This is done to change the characteristics of the flame. By changing these characteristics, three different types of flames can be obtained. If the ratio is between 1 is to 1 and 1.15 is to 1, a full combustion of fuel and oxygen takes place. This leads to a neutral flame. Most welding is done with a neutral flame as it will have the least chemical effect on the workpiece. When the amount of oxygen is much higher than the fuel, we get an oxidizing flame. The ratio of oxygen to fuel is generally 1.5 is to 1 in these flames. The oxidizing flame is also much hotter than neutralizing flames and often has a crackling noise to it. This flame is generally used to weld copper and its alloys. However, this type of flame is not used for most metals as the excess oxygen can lead to the formation of metal oxides. The third type of flame is called carbonizing flame. This flame generally has less oxygen and more fuel in it. This type of flame has a much lesser temperature than the other two. This is because the unburnt fuel reduces the temperature. The carbonizing flame tends to remove the oxides in the metal oxides while welding. Because of this, 
they are also called as reducing flames. Another important component is the non-return valve. A few fuels which are used with oxygen are not only flammable but also explosive. When the fuel oxygen mixture is ignited, there is a chance that the flame can travel back into cylinders through the hose and explode. To prevent this, a non-return check valve is provided. Another very interesting thing about gas welding is that with very minor changes, the process can be changed into gas cutting. In fact, the construction of a gas welding torch is much similar to the gas cutting torch. The only difference here being the extra pipe for oxygen blasting. We'll discuss how gas cutting works in another video.